Hello everyone and welcome to the Hylian Gamescast. I am Jesse, or Game Over Jesse as all of you may know me. Here with us is our co-host, Daniel. And today we're going to be discussing bad Majora's Mask reviews. So we've already had videos about this or similar to this on Breath of the Wild, Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, and now we are doing Majora's Mask. We'll probably go through all of the more popular, maybe just all of the Zelda games. And what we're doing is we understand that even with a game that's a 10 out of 10, or whatever our personal favorite games are, there can still be some things wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And a good reviewer or a good fan would be able to pick out those things. But if you go into a game like Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, and you give a review that's like, well, the Nintendo 64 is Nintendo's first console that allows four players, yet this game is single player, that's stupid, zero out of 10. Mm -hmm. Then you're not giving good criticism or criticism at all, you're just being an idiot. Yes, so, or, I hate how this game looks, so I didn't buy it. I give it a 0 out of 10. It's like, you can't... You shouldn't review this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing, on the last video uh, with Ocarina of Time, an example, someone said that the game was boring, all of the dungeons were the same, all of the bosses were the same. You could just crouch stab all of them and be mm -hmm. done with it to where you can't. And all of the dungeons aren't the same. They all have different puzzles that use the different items in different ways. They're all themed differently. There's fire, water, uh, ice, mini dungeon, forest, yep. everything. Shadow, spirit, whatever. Um, spirit's basically a light dungeon. Yeah. Anyways, um, oh, I feel like we should clarify it with that because there were some comments on the last video about this, the crouch stab thing. Yeah. We, we didn't mean you can't crouch stab them at all. We yeah. were just saying that you can't only crouch stab the bosses. You need to do another phase of the battle, like shoot them in the eye with an arrow first, and then sure, you can crouch stab them, guys. Don't worry. In fact, on my live stream, I did crouch stab the bongo bongo. <laughs> With the big one sword, it's doable, but I couldn't do the boss fight by only crouch stabbing him. I had to shoot him. So that that was the point we were getting at, just for people who were really angry about us saying you couldn't crouch stab the bosses. Um, <laughs> that's that's not quite what we meant. So um, yeah, yeah. Like you can choose to crouch stab yeah. after you like stun the enemy in yeah. whatever way that you need to stun them but like if you try to go in like you're playing zelda 2 and you just go to the corner and start crouch stabbing you're just going to look dumb yeah and die really quickly but like if you go to volvegia or volvagaia however you want to pronounce it and he's flying around dropping rocks and stuff or his head's coming out of the little holes in the ground you can't just crouch stab you have to shoot arrows while he's flying around and hope you hit his head or you have to wait until he comes out of the hole and hit him with the hammer um with twin rova you have to absorb the attacks in your shield reflect it back and then you have to dodge the attacks that are of the opposite um like if it's fire oh, that you're absorbing you have yeah. to dodge the ice and then you have to run towards her jump on the platform she's on and then attack her mm -hmm. like, then you can crouch stab her <laughs> yeah, none, literally none of the bosses allow you to just crouch stab the entire time that's what we were talking about um, yeah. because all of the different like they all make use or for the most part they make use of their individual dungeon items that you get so that's what we were talking about but anyways daniel yes also another stupid one that i remember breath of the wild someone says that like it's basically impossible 
to save in the game to you where can pause and... yeah yeah you can pause and save the you game just... anytime you want plus the game auto saves Very like 90 percent of the time like every time you go to a new area or mm. or you're you like do close anything. to a, a bacoblin camp <laughs> and it just auto saves yeah yeah i mean so anyways it's... daniel which one do you have for us right we'll probably go uh, through four of these so two each i did find one but where is it okay i found it sorry it took me a second so char or maybe it's char wrote back in the year 2002 <clears throat> this, this is a very rage-filled review. Just one sentence. No, it's two sentences, sorry. It doesn't even deserve the name Legend of Zelda. Poor storyline and redone OOT dungeons make Majora's Mask nothing but a cheap Ocarina of Time remake. So here's the problem, is that there's I don't think there's any repeat dungeons between the two they're all pretty different even though there's similar like elements like there's ice dungeon there's a water themed dungeon you like in every zelda game pretty much um they're pretty different from the ones in the ocarina of time and also everything else is really different like the graphics are the only thing that there's they've reused some of the assets for character models and stuff the three-day cycle instead of the seven-year back-and-forth thing. The warping is handled differently. The saving is handled differently. Link has a completely different model. The transformation masks. Um, there's only four dungeons and a jillion side quests. It's not even in Hyrule. Like, there's nothing remake about this. Um, so, basically, I don't think this person knew what they were talking about the dungeons are not even like the dungeons being re dues or redone dungeons are that's a very unsubstantiated claim i don't remember the part where you go in the deku tree in majora's mask <laughs> or in japa java's belly or dodongo's cavern or I any wonder, of them <laughs> i wonder if they think like oh well this is forest themed just like the other forest and themed dungeon <laughs> or like this one's water themed like the other okay or like they see the gorons it's like and still <laughs> handled really different because like the the forest themed dungeon, it was swamp theme really and the theme of it inside the dungeon is a lot more like uh it's not even really like forest themed in the dungeon like there's a lot of dark elements in that dungeon it would be more um, wind it's like themed. more wind and like dark ruins almost like the one from wind waker oh. like and the one where you have to use the the korok to fly around yeah there's no fire dungeon in majora's mask because the next one's an ice dungeon instead and it's got a fire pit at the bottom of it i guess but the rest of it is it's an ice themed dungeon and it's handled differently from the ice cavern in Ocarina of Time, it's because it's basically centered around one central tower room. The water dungeon, rather than being like a water temple, is um, like really just a mechanical themed dungeon. Mm -hmm. And Stone Tower is like a whole different beast, um, which I don't think ha even is, has a counterpart. Maybe closest thing is like kind of the spirit temple, maybe. But that's a stretch, even. So, basically, um, for me, it does not make sense. I, I like Stakona's uh, comment in the chat here. There is grass, trees, rock, water, and lava. Same game as last game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like... <laughs> exactly. That's, well, that's, yeah. that's what I liked are... about Skyward Sword um, really quick, is that it kind of sort of deviated from the themed dungeons like there wasn't just a water dungeon it was like a half water half shadow temple yeah 
Um, but then there was like two fire dungeons, so maybe I'm just stupid. No, but you know, even still, then there's also Skyview Temple just twice. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's um, Skyward Sword did, I think, deviate in my opinion um, nicely. Like it starts out almost that way, where you're thinking like, okay, it's gonna, you know, we're gonna go through the mo. You got your forest dungeon, you got your fire dungeon. And they're like, and now it's time for the desert and time travel. And you're like, oh, what? <laughs> okay. This is kind of neat. It's mechanical desert theme with the factory. A factory level in a Zelda game. I would yeah. say that's a pretty big deviation. So, um, yeah, no, I, I agree with your, with your point there, mister. So, yeah, I don't know. People are just, I don't, I don't. I don't get where their point was coming from, but thanks for that entertainment there, Char. All right, <laughs> so, this one. What do you got? What do you got? Comes from ASD FRE, oh, which is, is right below it. Um, oh, zero out of ten. Oh. From January thirteenth, two thousand seventeen. So two years ago. Mm -hmm. They may have just left this review. They leave it on the Nintendo sixty four version, so maybe that was when. They re-released it for the Wii U and the eShop. Okay, maybe. Um, because they would have left it on the 3DS version if they would have played that. But anyways, it says, Not only is this game overrated, it is also one of the worst Zelda games I have played. The Groundhog Day gimmick is forced down your throat. There is very little story and there are some of the worst dungeons and bosses I've seen in the series. There okay, are well, only... The bosses are not the strong suit of the game, I'll give him that. Well, there's only four of them. There's only four, though, that's true. Yeah. Um, there are only two side quests worth the effort, despite claims that all of them are brilliant. It is a crime that this sorry excuse for a Zelda game is ranked above Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. Sorry, uh, contrarians, this is a video game that did deserve the hate when it came out. So, I he think... mentions the bosses. Mm -hmm. That they're just really bad or horrible. But then he mentions Skyward Sword, which did have a couple of good bosses. Yeah, like But that's also the boss. game where you return to Giri him three different times and that could have been used yeah that could have been used for three other actual bosses and you return to the imprisoned three different times which again mm -hmm. could have been used for three other so even if you just fought Giri him once if you count and, the uh, thunder dragons trials yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if you like the way they do it is they give you, so if they gave you gear him and the mm -hmm. imprisoned one time each for the end of the game, then that's four bosses that you could have gotten in the game. Mm -hmm. Because they actually tricked me with uh, the fire temple or the earth temple, whichever it is, I forget. But it's the one where you have to get the, um, the fire lava dragon guy din yeah it's not the earth temple that's the first one you do it is it's got to be the fire sanctuary yeah it's the second time that you fight giri him yeah. so in the trailer i remembered seeing like link walking along this little bridge thing and there was like you could see the body of a dragon like part of the dragon comes out of the lava but it's just like the the tail of it and then it kind of goes back in like, it doesn't actually come out. And in mm. the trailer, I was like, is that a reference to Volvagia? To where, like, in this fire-themed dungeon, you're going to fight a fire dragon? And it got me really excited. So the entire game that I was playing, I was looking forward to that. Because they're like, hey, you gotta go find this fire dragon to get him on your side. Or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild kind of played around with this to where you have to fight one of the dragons right. but in this game i was thinking well valvegia is an ancient dragon that a hero a long time ago with the gorons uh or 
an old Goron a long time ago, uh, killed Valvegia, and then Ganondorf brings him back to life or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'm like, what if this was Valvegia when he was originally alive? So in my head, I was like, this is amazing. Nintendo actually like put together a really genius idea to link this game to um, Ocarina of Time, which they did with in a lot of other ways. But then you get to the boss room, and it's just gear him again. And it was one of the biggest letdowns of the game. But anyways, he put Skyward Sword uh, above Majora's Mask, which you can like Skyward Sword more than Majora's Mask. It doesn't matter, but it's just like when he talks about the bosses. Um, the first boss, I thought, was very... Like... I don't like the noise that he makes. Ottawa. When he's like... Yeah, when he's, like, jumping around or whatever and making that noise. Mm. But I thought it was really cool because you never see an enemy that you fight in a Zelda game that also has a sword. Like, the closest was the Dark Nuts. Right. So I thought it was interesting to finally have someone who has a sword and shield or whatever that's attacking, but it sucked. It was a giant because then, like, the sword combat really isn't part of the gameplay. It's just attacking him the other way. Like, mm-hmm. your sword combat is, but, like, it really wouldn't matter if he had a sword or if he was just smacking towards you. But I thought that was cool. The Goron boss was... Um, God. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Goat Goth. But know. I used to go back and replay um, that boss all the time because it was really fun um, mm. playing as the Goron, like having a reason to do the Goron role. And then yeah. I thought, I didn't like the third boss, but the fourth boss I also thought was really fun because yeah. you can turn into a giant or you can stay small and shoot. I don't know. Like, I just thought it was really cool. So, but, you know, that's his opinion. He can choose to not like it or whatever. But then there's the thing about the side quests that, like, there's no point to the side quests. They're all boring except two. I wonder Those two really likely, likes. probably the ones that lead, like, the two different side quests that both connect and lead to the, the, couple's mask or whatever so probably the andrew cafe one and what the aliens yeah yeah that's a shame there's some goodies in there yeah and then like, like all of the of other ones smaller like those are the big ones i think but still yeah and it's like some of them add a lot of lore to it like when you get the garu mask mm-hmm um there's the, like, I I like the, the one where you get the bomb mask. Right. So because you can shot. see, yeah, you can see, like, multiple situations with that. To where, like, what happens if you, if the bombs explode and kill him? What happens if he gets away? What happens if you do it successfully? And then you get the postman's hat that, like, lets you check the mail and everything, which I think's part of the one quest. I'm not really sure. Kind of. It's part of the Andrew Cafe quest. Yeah. It's one of the endings, because you have to do that quest twice if you want everything. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I, I really like it. And then, like, there's no story. It's one of the games that actually has a story and has the most story mm. out of all of the Zelda games, really, until... I would say Skyward Sword was the one that was the closest that had you caring about the side characters because Twilight Princess and Wind Waker had you caring about a couple of characters. But with Skyward Sword, you actually get to know everyone on Skyloft almost as much as you get to know all of the people in Clocktown. But if you just... Like, maybe he didn't take the time to go through all of the side quests. Maybe he just did two that he liked and then a couple of others that weren't good. And then he 
he just didn't bother with the rest. Yeah, I don't he's know. like, ah, I don't want to trade in these land title deeds. <laughs> yeah, or um, like getting the all night mask and learning about the story of the festival and everything, the giants. I like that one, actually. Yeah. I like stuff like that, right? Or yeah. World building. So go to the next one, Daniel. The next bad review? Or are we doing yeah. another one? All right. Uh, I only picked out one before. One that... It worth, can be a small one. It doesn't matter. It's got to be worth it, though. It's got to be a goodie. All right. I haven't read this one yet, but it's... it's uh, let's. I'm just going to choose this one. Two out of ten from Meta Censorship. He wrote in August of 2016. Okay. Wow, Nintendo. You're making me beat up kids now? Hold on. <laughs> Am I looking at the right game? <laughs> what? And it has to be some kids that wear a mask because he's ugly or something. Okay, I don't. Maybe he's talking about the, the skull the kid. S- maybe skull kid wears a mask. The children on the moon wear masks. Okay. But you don't Nintendo beat them up. Are bullies or something? Anyways, this game's weird and creepy. I think I turned into a tree or something, and I was supposed <laughs> to fight the moon. Not only are Nintendo bullies. But they also trip on acid or something occasionally. Like, what the bleep. 2 out of 10. Not the moon I was wanting to see. Where's the elf girl? I think this is like a troll post, <laughs> to be honest. I I can't read this and think that they were being serious. Because um, clearly they don't know what is going on <laughs> in this game. Like They clearly don't get it. Oh, that's really weird. <laughs> Jesse, thoughts, problems, issues? They were playing a different game? <laughs> I guess so. They were playing Bully. Or th- they were playing Majora's Mask Drunk or something? They, were, they got... Yeah, you know there's a song. I was gonna go to work. <laughs> yeah, goes, yeah. Yeah, it goes a little different. This is Oh. Good. Did you earlier today? <laughs> there, there's a cool story to go along with that song. Uh, earlier yeah. today, I was going to go to work. No, um, <laughs> I'm at work right now. Technically, uh, Kevin Smith posted on Instagram. Uh, it's like day four of Jay and Silent Bob reboot, mm. which isn't technically a reboot. It's just in the universe of Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, the original movie, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, the entire plot of the movie, they were going to stop Jay and Silent Bob from being made because they didn't get paid for it and they were right. owed like millions of dollars or whatever. But Royalties. in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, it's making fun of the idea of how everything's being rebooted. So they are rebooting the Jay and, or the Blunt Man and Chronic movie, which is the movie that they originally went to stop the first time so in this one they're going to stop the reboot so like the title's a meta thing but anyways they took a picture earlier where it was kevin smith and jason muse with uh red man and method man who did that song right and was in the movie how high so i just thought about bringing that up because we were talking about kevin smith earlier and then we you just were. happened to do the song so yeah. they're connected my point is i don't think this person that wrote this movie <laughs> was of the right mind i think they were under yeah. the influence okay so this of is something here's the one that i got all right uh where is it okay yeah from Woolgard. This game is pure trash. How can people like this game? The graphics are garbage bad. It's like a team of amateurs did this game. It's way too easy. The story is atrociously bad. All of the characters are forgettable. The fan base is way too much up Zelda 
S. So... This review was written in 2017. Did he know the game came out in the year 2000? Yeah. When technically... Um, the So the Nintendo 64 graphically was more powerful than the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, I think. Whatever was out at the time. Was it, no, it wasn't Dreamcast. It was Saturn out at that point, right? Yeah. It's and all modeled in my head. So it was more powerful than any of those and even computers uh, at the time. Like the graphics on games for most computers, uh, the Nintendo 64 was more powerful because this was at a time when uh, computers were actually behind the consoles, unless you had a really, really powerful computer at the time. But, so the Nintendo 64 was more powerful than they were. And Majora's Mask technically had so much going on that you couldn't even play it on the base Nintendo 64. You needed the extra RAM and everything mm-hmm. for the... There was the the time system in the game, but there was also... Um, it is, it's graphically superior to... Yeah, time. like they had Link's mentioned... It's even improved. Yeah, but they mentioned that like they use it to have... Uh, there was one interview where they mentioned... In the Ottawa boss fight, specifically, and a bunch of other areas, there are, like, bees or tiny bats or something like that that are all flying around him that also attack you. And they said that they were really proud of the amount of different AI or enemies they had on the screen at one time. Because on the normal Nintendo 64 or other consoles that amount of enemies on screen at one time would not be possible. It would just cause the console to crash. Wow. But they were able to do it, so... Yeah. Impressive. Yeah, so technically, Majora's Mask was one of the best-looking games at the time, period. Not yeah. just on Nintendo 64, but out of every other game that existed at the time it was one of the best especially if you do go and look at games like 007 or whatever which were fun but if you looked at the character models it's just like the it just looked bad and everyone's hands were like this (laughs) yeah (laughs) so So. uh I think that's the the last one though do you have any thoughts on it you know, you just you like can't none just of these were all angry and criticism. Write two cent and throw some extra exclamation points and fancy yourself like, yep, I'm a you, game reviewer. Maybe now. if they would have <laughs> used caps lock more, their mm. point would have gotten across. That's probably why. Yeah, that's how people take you seriously. Yeah. Yeah, that's See, it. I just my hope in these. Convince anyone. Yeah, my, my hope in these is that someone will actually be like, this game is absolutely awful, here's why. And yeah. then give legitimate reasons. It, yeah, I mean, here's the thing I think someone was missing. There's been some comments on some of the other videos where we're talking about bad reviews, but it's okay to not like these games if you genuinely don't like them for good reasons. I get it. Yeah, but like Wind Waker. You spend way too much time selling around. Yeah, that's there's, a there's, legitimate criticism. There, there are genuine criticisms games, and uh, that's fine. But you can't just be like, "I hate it because it sucks so bad." Nintendo, I hate you. <laughs> oh man, I'm a professional re- video game review writer. I'm s- such a professional. I'm gonna. It just it doesn't. You gotta express yourself in a little bit of a better way maybe just calm down breathe and then write like if you're (laughs) going to go to a website create a profile go to your email confirm on your email that you made a profile for the website go back Mm -hmm. to the website find the game page for the website 
type out your review, mm-hmm. if you're going to go through that entire process, at least give an actual review and not just like cry yeah. about it. So That's the thing is, yeah, because it's, it's not a criticism at that point. It's just whining. I don't want to listen to you whine. Yeah, which is why so. we read through it and kind of make fun of all yeah, of this I, because not, we're we have a law. We're hoping to find one where someone is actually making good points, and then maybe, like, because it is possible to where you're just such a fan of something that you can't see the negative stuff. Sure. Um, so, like, maybe someone will bring up a point sometime to where it'll make us be like, oh, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. That is interesting. So, yes. anyways, um, do you have time for a final topic? There's no news article or anything. It's just a, a quick thing. Sure. It's Let's about multiplayer. It. Sure. Let's right. do it. Hey, everyone. It's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.